Welcome back to the Nitty Gritty of Real Estate Podcast. Today, we're talking about what is going on with the economy and Fed in 2022. Let's get into it. All right, guys, welcome back. I am Joe Brown with the Tom J. Krieger team, and we're with Tom Krieger. Uh, and we are talking about the economy and the Fed. So there's some complicated global events that are happening. Yes, sir. Uh, which we will get into a little bit more here. And we're looking at this through the lens of home buying yep. and, and real estate. Yep. So raising interest rates. The Fed has talked about that. Yep. Can you illuminate us a little bit more on what that means to someone looking to buy a home? Yeah, Joe. So first of all, I call it rising interest rates because they are going to rise. The Fed will raise them. Um, we thought that it was going to be a 50 basis point uh, increase. But because of what happened with Russia and Ukraine, currently right now when we're taping this, um, it's the conflict that we're going in. When this airs, it may be a week or two later. Um, the Fed doesn't want to shock the economy too much, so they're going to probably, in 11 days, only raise the Fed funds rate by 25 basis points. That will reflect into a quarter point at least increase in the um, mortgage rates that we have, which currently are about four and a quarter to four and a half, depending on your credit rating. So it's probably going to go from four and a half to four and three quarters. What I believe is that the next meeting, after this settles down, hopefully, God willing, this doesn't broaden into Europe. I don't think it will. I think cooler heads will prevail. But if it does broaden into, into Europe and we start looking at NATO conflicts, all bits are off. Okay, that's a what we call a black swan event, yeah. and we won't know where we're going to go from there. My assumption is 25 basis points now. At the next Fed meeting, they'll bump it to 50. The reason they're not doing the 50 now is because it would be too much of a shock to the economy with everything. You know, uh, oil prices went up to over 100 bucks a barrel yesterday. Uh, the stock market was was down like 875 points. It's come back a little bit. Um, I don't think that turmoil is over yet. Um, I believe that our economy is so darn hot. Our inflation is, you know, they, they give you all these numbers. You get so confused with, you know, the the producer price index and the consumer price index and the Michigan State, you know, uh, feel and this raw cost here and that co in 7.5, 8.6, 9.1, 3.3. Here's the reality of it. We're over 10% uh, inflation rate right now. Okay. When you factor in everything, it's costing us 10% more to purchase on average the products in the United States. Wow. That is something that we need to pay attention to when we start looking at wanting to buy a home or we start looking at now with the home we have. If I was really stretched in the home ownership, let's say I bought my home five years ago and I stretched to get into it and I've been doing okay, but now all of a sudden I'm paying 10% more for beef, I'm paying 10% more for my insurance on my car, I'm paying 10% more for the electricity, all of a sudden I'm getting tight again, right? Yep. So we need to pay attention to that. We also need to realize that because of those increased costs to us, we may be priced, be priced out of comfortable home ownership. We might want to think about, okay, where can I cut? Sure. Where can I save some money? You know, instead of going out three times a month with my wife, I'm going to go out one time a month. Uh, we might look at, okay, I'm, uh, I'm buying prime beef when I could go buy choice beef. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at um, Jimmy Choo shoes when I'm fine with going and buying the standard shoes at, let's say, Macy's. Sure, okay? sure. Uh, so... We want to look at, at, at that. We also want to pay attention to if I am buying a house, I'm selling my house now, which, by the way, I'll probably get the most amount of money for my house ever yep. uh, the, because the real estate market's really hot. But where am I going to move to, right? Where am I going to 
And then I go, okay, well, the rates are going up. That's going to cost me more money. Maybe I shouldn't move. Mm -hmm. You know, and this is kind of, could be contradictory. Maybe I shouldn't move. Maybe I should stay here. Yeah. For a, a year or so and just wait for things to cool down. Or maybe what I should do is look at new construction. Can I somehow lock a rate in? Mm -hmm. What would it cost me to lock the rate in? And then wait a year for the new construction to be done. Buy it at today's prices. It'll be worth more in the future. And there, so, are, there are different mortgage packages as well that, that where you can get locked in for longer yes. periods of time. So that's, again, why it's a good thing to have someone who is knowledgeable about that on your side who can refer you to a lender, uh, you know, someone who's a, a qualified agent who we can refer you to. Again, we always talk about this. Let's get you talking to someone qualified in your area to give you this advice. You know, um, Joe, I, I, I want to share with this. Interest rates are very critical when you're yeah. when you're financing a house people try to buy a house not based upon the interest rate they be, they and even not on the price what they base it on is how much can i afford a month mm -hmm. that's getting it down to what we call the prime number right instead of 6 we're getting down to 2 and 3 right pay attention to the interest rates Realize that when interest rates change, you're not going to be able to afford as much of a house. Interest rates are going up. That's not a guess. Right. That's a fact. Yep. If you're going to buy, you want to buy now. Don't overspend. If you're comfortable in your house now and you can stay there for another four to five years, my suggestion is stay there. Okay? Save more money. Mm -hmm. Okay? But if you feel you need to move, real estate, purchase now is more valuable than real estate in the future. You brought up the price of oil yep. earlier, and that reached over $100 a barrel. Yep. What sort of impact does that have on housing and the supply of housing goods? So I believe oil is going to go to about 120 bucks a barrel. That's my guesstimate, okay? And at 120 bucks a barrel, we're going to be paying 5 to $6 a gallon for gas. That's painful. Okay. So um, I remember filling up my um, Jeep. I have a Jeep. And two years ago, when I filled the Jeep up, I was paying $35 for a tank. I'm paying $80 for a tank now, okay? Yeah. So, and I spend two tankfuls a week, okay? That's 50 bucks, roughly, 45 bucks. Twice a week is 90 bucks. Four times a week, $360. Yeah. You know what $360 is? It's another car payment. Yeah. Okay. It, for some people, it's half a mortgage payment. Yep. Okay. Just the price of gasoline alone infects your availability to buy. Okay. Sure. Buying, um, buying houses, buying food, right? But now let's talk about that food. It doesn't grow in the grocery store. It's got to be delivered to the grocery store. And it doesn't grow in those fancy packages. It's got to be put in those packages. All of those processes require energy of some sort, whether it's physical energy, mechanical energy, solar energy. All of that gets factored into the cost of the food because oil is utilized in that. I see. Okay, that yeah. process of moving people. It's very rare you will see everything done by sun power, right? Yeah. So the price of oil is going to impact the distribution of the products for your home, okay? Cutting the lumber down, transporting the lumber, getting it to the mills, refining it, the asphalt shingles that, as a petroleum product, right? Mm -hmm. The plastics that are petroleum products for the piping in your house or the fixtures, the processing of the, of the uh, metal for the faucets or for your ceiling fans or for your oven. It all impacts on the cost of oil. So as interest rates goes up or go up and as oil prices go up, the price of products are going up. So we want to we wanna be aware of that when we start setting out budgets for buying houses. Mm. Okay. I tell people, well, we're going to buy a new construction. And we're going to lock it in at today's rates. And then when, when it closes, the house is going to be worth more. You're absolutely right. And that's a smart thing to do. Are you prepared for the cost to buy that house to be raised? Well, what do you mean? 
Well, right now, it's four and a quarter, four and a half, depending on your credit rating. Then it's going to be 4.75 4. or 5% interest rate. How does that affect how much you're paying? Have you talked with your lender about that? Hmm, could I buy my interest rate down? How much would that cost? Well, what do you mean buying it down? Well, you can pay money to the lender and push your interest rate down so that your monthly payment's cheaper. You may want to look at that. You may want to look at, instead of putting 25% down, I'm going to put 20% down, and the other 5% I'm going to use to buy down my interest rate so my monthly payment is less. Yeah. Work with a, a qualified um, lender on that, and if you need help, you can just connect with us on the bottom of this podcast. It'll it'll give you that information. But be aware of what's happening in the economy when it comes to purchasing your house. Oil is huge in the purchase of a home, not only in the cost to build it, but in your everyday life where you're spending money. Hey everyone, we want to interrupt this episode to let you know that we are a Keller Williams Southern Arizona franchise. Also, we are licensed realtors practicing equal housing. Now let's get you back to the podcast. And this could affect job security, right? So, oh my gosh, yes. So th there's people who maybe are more conscious of this going, am I going to have a job next year uh, with everything happening globally? Are things going to get too expensive to where businesses might have to cut people? Um, we hope that doesn't happen, but it will definitely affect job security. So um, how does an economic slowdown affect long-term affordability? Well, obviously, if we have a slowdown, what just the, the, the word slow down, that means there might not be as much overtime for you to work, okay? There might not be as much opportunity to get a job. Hiring may be restricted. Now, right now, we are in a labor shortage. We know that, okay? Mm -hmm. That's not going to last forever, okay? And here's something people should be aware of, too. Labor shortages create the need for automation. Mm, sure. Okay? M Look at McDonald's as an example. Yep. It was hard finding quality people to work at McDonald's. McDonald's is a great place to work. I worked at McDonald's when I was serving an apprenticeship. I learned uh, systems in McDonald's. McDonald's is a great place to learn about systems and how systems make things uh, flow effectively. McDonald's couldn't find the quality help. Now what have they got? Kiosks, right? Yeah. You go up and punch in what you want. There's not a person there anymore. This and is, then you go up there and grab it out of the window. Yeah, this is exactly why a Big Mac tastes the same here as it does in Tokyo. Exactly, because <laughs> it's the same product, yep. okay? Yep. Um, so a slowdown sometimes pushes out automation. And automation then removes jobs. Okay? Yeah. You may not have a job a year from now or two years from now. So if we have a robust economy and we have small businesses growing and they're inventing and they're hiring people, mm -hmm. your ability to, to have good income is increased versus an economic slowdown, right? Yeah. So yeah. when we slow down the economy, we slow down the availability to grow financially in our home. Yeah. Okay. So the trickle down of that growth yes. takes a little longer. Yeah. Yeah. If, if there is any growth. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So that's it. Um, and this is why it's important to not over leverage yeah, yourself. We don't want to over leverage ourselves, especially if the economy takes a turn down. Now, again, we're talking about during the Russia, uh, Ukraine crisis, we don't know yep. what's going to happen. Yep. You know, there's thoughts about, um, Cyber war going back and forth and all this kind of stuff. I, some of it's a hyperbole, but you just you never know. We want to make sure that we're not too far leveraged. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We want to have some cushion. Yeah. So if I can afford a three hundred and fifty thousand dollar house, maybe I should be looking at a three hundred or two seventy five. Yeah. And say, you know what? We'll sit here in a house like that, and we won't stretch out too far, just in case something happens. Right. Yep. So uh, avoid being house poor, first off. Yes, avoid and, and being house poor. Just in general, regardless of the economy, yep. you know, you don't want to just be working to go home and stay there. No. 
No. <laughs> you want to have some fun outside of yeah. your home. Yeah, you need some dispo- what we call disposable income. Yeah. Uh, if your house poor, uh, I, I, you know, I really think the millennials now that are coming out, even the Gen Xers, have gotten beyond what the baby boomers like me were doing. Mm-hmm. Oh, look at me. I got this big house, and I got that big house, and I got this. Look at me, 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 me. I got this, 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 and this. Yeah. I think that mindset has changed in that uh, arena of, of population. And it's more like, okay, can we get a, a sustainable house? Can we keep a small footprint? Okay. Um, can we live within our means? Mm-hmm. Can we put some money away so that the kids have, you know, the opportunity to go to college if they choose to? They don't have to. Mm-hmm. You can get a great job without going to college. Okay. We need apprentices out there. We need construction workers. We need doctors. We need nurses. You don't necessarily need to go to college to become a nurse. Mm-hmm. You can go to a nursing school, right? Yep. So. But to have that money set aside in case it rains, right? Something happens. We get a black swan event. All of a sudden, I lose my job. Well, I got six months worth of mortgage payments in the bank. We don't have to worry about losing the house, okay? Um, yeah, well, we need a new hot water heater. Well, there, there's the $900 for the hot water heater. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Don't overspend. Stay within your comfort level. And um, don't try and keep up with the Joneses. Sure. That's the term I was looking for. <laughs> there, uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. So, and that that's, again, we're going to refer in the future here, Podcast 68. Yeah. We'll be coming out, getting your financial house in order. Yeah. Uh, definitely keep, get a plan together and stick to the plan. That's a big. Exactly. Plan. Yeah. You know, I mean, let's, let's talk about sports. They have a game plan. Tom yeah. Brady had a game plan when he won the Super Bowls, right? Yeah. Yeah. Matthew Stafford in the Super Bowl here had a game plan. Yeah. And Aaron Donald had a game plan, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Unfortunately, the other team didn't have as good a game plan, right? So the game plan gets you where, to where you want to be, and it helps you when there's a bump along the road. Okay. Oh, well, look at what happened here. Okay. Well, what do we do now? Stick to the game plan. Yeah. Savings. Paying debt off. Don't over leverage. Let's be smart with our money. Yeah. 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 I well, mean, it's not like we're hurting here in the United States. In general, right. of course there are people. There are homeless people. There are uh, uh, sure. you know, there are people on opioids and all that kind of stuff. I don't mean to discount those people whatsoever. They're going through some tough times. But in general, we had a pretty darn good, robust economy. Yeah. Now it's time to say, okay, we, we had a good time. Let's pull back a little bit. Let's live within our means. Let's save. Let's pay off debt. If we're going to buy a house... Let's talk with our real estate agent. Say, okay, this is what we can afford, but we're a little uncomfortable. What would you recommend? Yeah. Yeah. yeah great advice, Tom. Yep. So, yeah. Um, thank you for listening to this latest episode of the Nitty Grid of Real Estate Podcast. So, economy and the Fed, big stuff here. Yep. Uh, heavy stuff to go over. Um, it, and I, I would assume it would still be going on while this is coming out. Um, I, and I hope it gets resolved quickly. If you need to speak to a real estate agent in your area, please reach out to us. Our info is down in the show notes. Um, Tom, thanks again for all your expertise and illuminating welcome, all Joe. these. Yeah, you know, and I, I just want everybody to know, um, I'm not the gloom and doom guy. I'm real positive. I want to make your life comfortable and keep you within the parameters that will allow you to stay comfortable. All right. Well, thanks, Tom. All right, buddy. You heard it here first. Yeah. We'll see you next episode. Hey, thank you for listening and watching the Nitty Gritty Podcast here with the Tom J. Krieger team. If you are thinking about buying a home, selling a home, or even investing in real estate, please reach out to us. We are local here in Tucson, Arizona, but we are also connected to over 4,000 agents across the US. So again, looking to buy, sell, or invest in your hometown, reach out to us and let us connect you.